Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Uh, last lesson you learned how to make multiple enemies chase you around. And since then I found a little bug and that is when the three bugs chase you for a while, they start to all move in together uh, into one bug. And <laughs> that sounds weird. And um, so I've programmed, I've added, added in a little bit of code to fix that. Uh, basically what happens is when the bugs are colliding with each other they will bounce off each other now in my new in my new program so if you have a look so what happens is uh, I've also made the objects a bit smaller so when the bugs come together you can see they don't come on top of each other they stay apart right as three bugs and so I'm running around chasing down my um, blue gem and uh, so you can see that the three bugs they don't come together as one bug they stay separated so uh, that's the improvement that I've made to my new program and you might say oh well what is that that's hardly anything but that actually took me a while to program so I'll show you guys how I did that um, or if you want to program that yourself first and see if you can get that out without looking at my answers. Um, so basically what I did was I created a bounce off function which I'm going to call later. So the bounce off function has two input variables object1 object2 both by ref so not by val by ref that means the objects themselves are passed into the function and if the two objects are colliding then I check whether object 1 is on the left of object 1 is on the right of object 2 so I'll type that as a comment check if object 1 is on the right of object 2 if yes then move object one uh, to the right and object two to the left. Alright, because when they're colliding, um, it's most likely that one object is going to be uh, on the right and one object is on the left when they're, wherever they're colliding. So when one object is on the right the other object is on the left I'm gonna move them uh, to the opposite direction one moves to the right the other one moves to the left if object 2 is on the right of object 1 then move object 2 to the right and object 1 to the left so you can see that's what's happening here. The left corner minus one and the right and the left corner of object two plus one. So this is the code for bouncing off each other. This is actually the easy part. Um, the next part took me a really long time, and that is programmed called in the timer one tick event handler. And that is when the two bugs come too close together make them bounce off each other so this is actually in the timer we check whether they're too close so we call the function bounce off the problem is there's more than two bugs there are three bugs so what's happening is uh, I have created a nested for loop that checks so nested for loop just means one for loop inside another for loop to check whether the three bugs are uh, colliding. So I just want to show you guys the logic behind my two for loops before I um, show you the coding. Well actually I've already shown you the coding but I'll just show you the logic behind the loops. Basically, let's say that I had four bucks. All right, I'm going to 
check whether bugs one and two are colliding so the arrows represent a check then I'm gonna check bug one and three then I'm gonna check bug one and four and so what happens now is I've got to now check bugs two and three and I've got to check bugs two and four to see whether they're colliding and then the last thing I'm gonna check is check whether bugs three and four are colliding alright so that's why I need um, two for loops uh, the first for loop for j equals two to k minus one so k right now is the number of bugs I'll just type that in here k equals the number of bugs which is right now two bugs and uh, so you can have a look at this thing here basically the first thing I want to do is check whether bug number one collides with bug number two so you can see when in my program uh, J is equal to zero right now to start with so that's gonna be my first bug actually I'm gonna change the numbering here to match the programming so I have bug number uh, zero first so that's zero one two three so I'm gonna check whether bug zero collides with bug number one so that's why you can see here I'm checking between bug array J which right now is 0 and bug array J plus I which is right now 1 so I'm checking to see whether the first two bugs are colliding then I'm gonna check whether bug 0 is colliding with bug number 2 so once I've done this check here um, I now uh, get out of the inside for loop sorry let me say that again once I have done this once it's done this pro once it's done this command here it's then gonna go from I is equal to 1 to the next number which is I is equal to 2 so we're now gonna check whether bug J which is right now still zero because the inside for loop is still running so it's gonna check whether bug J which is the zeroth bug collides with bug array J plus I which is right now two because we've already we've just done one so it's gonna check whether this bug here is colliding with this bug and then um, K right now is 2 so uh, sorry K right now is so K right now was uh, it was 1 to start off so we check between zero bug 0 bug 1 and then we plus 1 to the variable I so it's gonna check between bug 1 and bug 2 um, and we only have we only have three bugs so that's why it doesn't it doesn't check for another bug but hypothetically if we had another bug so if K was three then it's gonna uh, check between bug zero and bug three but K is two so it finishes the inside for loop we then go to the outside for loop J goes from zero to one and then we check between the first the uh, bug number one and bug number two and so on and notice I have an if statement here saying if I plus J is smaller than or equal to K right because the point of that is we don't want to check between bug for example if we only have two bugs there is no point in checking between bug one and bug three or bug two and bug three because we only have we only have uh, three bugs so we won't get to the fourth bug so it might take you a while to understand this section here but um, it works it works that's what I'm saying so uh, try to figure that out yourself um, you should be able to get it now just from 
looking at these two sections of code we have the the uh, nested for loops as well as the new function bounce off so uh, see if you see if you can figure that out and um, come back to the next tutorial when you're ready thanks for watching see you next time